Ritual is actually essential to the core, to the existence of every African on the planet. Um, our ancestors created rituals thousands of years ago to address every aspect or every issue of life um, that we dealt with. Um, and so what the purpose of many rituals were just to realign us back into community, realign us with God, and just realign us with ourselves, which within the context of a ritual, you actually have a very cohesive community. So the practice of ritual will, will elevate us because it will put us, first of all, it'll put us back in tune with our ancestors. It will align us with God in a way that we were aligned with God hundreds, even thousands of years ago. And we'll have that relationship with God because you, you can't, necessarily have a relationship with God if you're not connected to God and but to do that you need to be connected to nature and you need to be connected to your ancestors because we are nature ourselves even though sometimes we attempt to separate ourselves and say as human beings we are above all things that is a European way of thinking you can go to not only African indigenous cultures you can go to any indigenous culture in the world look have conversations with those elders, they will tell you that the human being is not above anything else at all. And you go to some cultures, they'll tell you that the human human beings are actually at the bottom of intelligence. And that a tree itself is actually of higher intelligence, or is at the, the, the pinnacle of intelligence as it relates to uh, living beings on this earth. It's been well documented that people of African descent around the world are the most spiritual people in the world, which says simply that that's our strength. Um, and currently, for the last 300 years or so, we've been existing in the strength of someone else and attempting to gain our liberation within the context and using the strength of someone else, which doesn't work for us, and that's one of the reasons we don't have liberation today. Um, and one of, one of my favorite examples that I like to cite is the Haitian Revolution, where uh, Dada Bookman um, told uh, his fellow Africans that um, if they wanted to be free, then they have to give up the God of their slave master and take on the spiritual system and the God of um, our indigenous people, of our ancestors. And so that's one of my favorite examples. And we can look throughout history. We can look at Matt Turner. Um, we can look uh, throughout uh, Jamaica. And you'll see that, if we go down to South America, you'll see that any group of people who fought against uh, oppression, against racism, white supremacy, against slavery, they were fighting against that within the context of our indigenous spiritual systems. You're not going to find anybody fighting uh, that battle within the context of the religion of our slave masters. Just, I haven't seen it. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I haven't seen anyone do that and be successful. Racism, as far as it having an impact on Africans in the world, will be eradicated. And that's not to say that racism, white supremacy itself won't exist, but the impact on the African will be non-existent at all because when you're in liberation um, you have to be walking in your purpose first of all to even know that liberation even exists or you have to understand that you have a purpose to even know that liberation exists so when we're walking uh, in our purpose and we're exercising our gifts within the context of the community then racism white supremacy it doesn't have an impact it can exist in the same way that there are other things in the world that exist but everything in the world doesn't have a direct impact.